As the Insider Exclusive Investigative News Team travels across America producing the Justice in America Network TV series, we invite you to join us as we uncover real stories about the issues that promote justice and fairness for injured people, safeguards victims' rights, and the opportunity to help guide the hands of justice, especially when people's lives have been destroyed, families ruined, dreams lost, or widespread societal change and reform are needed. These true stories about real, ordinary people, their real lives, always up close and personal, and always unfiltered stories of unimaginable pain, suffering, and great wrongs, but also of courage and faith and the dauntlessness of the human spirit. These stories are also about the trial lawyers who helped these ordinary people navigate a very complex legal system to get justice as they faced extreme life-altering adversities and how the government and big business with their million-dollar PR campaigns are slowly eroding our rights to seek justice and making an end run around the civil justice system. Our TV stories show relief and vindication for shattered lives and seemingly lost souls. The compassion, warmth, love, and determination of the human spirit found within these shows are neither imagined nor contrived. They are truly personal crusades and telling journeys of what it means to seek justice in the American courtroom. In this insider exclusive network TV special, Justice in America, the Truths and Myths of Tort Reform, we visit with Victor Ferruja at Ferruja Law Firm. As he takes us inside today's legal system, examining lawyers' strategies, clients' thoughts, and in vivid detail, showing you the often heartbreaking stories of these clients, dramatically demonstrating what motivates trial lawyers to fight for their clients' causes. Some of these same trial lawyers have been in the crosshairs of attacks by so-called tort reform advocates for the past 30 years. These attacks are not new. Now, a lot of you have heard and read about tort reform, but really don't understand how or what it really means, or how it affects us negatively every time we walk into the courtroom. So in this special Network TV Insider exclusive documentary, Justice in America, The Truths and Myths of Tort Reform, we will show you how tort reform is making justice more and more difficult for the average American. And we're not going to do it by words or fancy language, but by inviting you along to meet our guests and their lawyers in small towns and big cities filmed across America, who've had the unfortunate bad luck to be severely injured or victimized by big businesses, the government, or law enforcement. These victims could be you or me one day, and if you are so unlucky, you will quickly find out that justice in America is a hard-won battle where very few companies and individuals do the right thing, and you need trial warriors who wage a battle with their own financial resources to get their clients justice. But before we get started, just for the record, let's define what the heck tort reform means in simple language. Tort is a legal term describing the system of compensation used by the courts to assign remedies, awards, and damages for harm done by one party to another, be it to their person, property, or other protected interest. Tort law defines what constitutes a legal injury and establishes liability. It's the civil court's answer to criminal law. Tort reform, then, is the political term for the controversial issue of reducing tort litigation, awards, damages, and or compensation. Now, tort reform isn't one single idea or law. Instead, it's a group of ideas and laws designed to change the way our civil justice system works. While each tort reform law is different, they all share one or more of the following goals. To make it more difficult for injured people to file a lawsuit, to make it more difficult for injured people to obtain a jury trial, and to put limits on the amount of money injured people receive in a lawsuit. Keep in mind that throughout history, our civil justice system has kept Americans safe by allowing them a fair chance to receive justice when they are injured by the negligence of others, even when it means taking on the most powerful corporations. When corporations and their CEOs act irresponsibly by cutting corners on safety, producing unsafe products, polluting our environment, or swindling their employees and shareholders, the last resort to hold them accountable is in our courts. The legal system provides justice to those injured by deliberate misconduct and deters future misconduct by holding wrongdoers accountable. 
Here's just a quick review of a few Justice in America Network TV show segments of these real case stories of ordinary people, their real lives, and their trial lawyers who help these ordinary folks navigate a very complex legal system to get justice as they faced extreme life-altering adversities. Real cases that promote justice and fairness for injured people safeguards victims' rights and the opportunity to help guide the hands of justice. Especially when people's lives have been destroyed, families ruined, dreams lost, or widespread societal change and reform are needed. And how the government and big business are slowly eroding our rights to seek justice, making an end run around the civil justice system and calling it tort reform. For many of the nearly 50,000 9-11 first responders, the wounds of the Twin Tower attacks are far from healing. These rescue workers continue to struggle with respiratory illness, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder, and many of them may be at increased risk for developing a number of cancers. Because they and their fellow rescue workers were picking through rubble littered with asbestos, mercury, crushed fluorescent light bulbs, and other known toxins, and they were outfitted with only their normal uniform to protect them from potential contaminants. When hundreds of victims and their families were left struggling with impending health problems and emotional instabilities after the World Trade Center attacks, the Uniform Firefighters Association of Greater New York selected one law firm, Sullivan, Papain, Block, McGrath, and Canavo, their friends and trusted legal advisors for the past 20 years, to come to their rescue. Because sometimes, even first responders need to be saved. I was promised a better life, far away from my home. I used to have a family. Now, I must pay for my family's debts. I sleep with many men every day. They make me kill for a war. Work many long hours. Trapped. Beaten. Scared. Locked in the dark. With no way out. I want to go home. I want my freedom. 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 The last thing that we as Americans would, would remotely suspect is that the greatest engineering firm in the world, so named because they were able to build a Panama Canal when no one else could, the greatest engineering firm in the world caused, caused the flooding of this city. Not Hurricane Katrina, the United States Army Corps of Engineers.
and because of one negligent moment, it has become a painful and needless tragedy. the state of Louisiana's medical malpractice laws are full of traps and how the healthcare and insurance industries are far more protected than anywhere else. In Sharon Boxy's case, you will see how her doctors malpositioned her head and neck during surgery that substantially reduced blood flow through the carotid arteries to her brain causing massive brain damage which went undetected during surgery and rendered her a total quadriplegic. So far in 34 years, no one has come close to having a Supreme Court decision yeah. finding that the cap or the act was unconstitutional. Um, we are going to show right now uh, a day in the life of Sharon Boxy and what these doctors did to her. And you're quite familiar with this video that we have on the screen right now. Tell us a little bit about her daily activities well, her daily activities are markedly reduced. Her sister and her family have, have been incredibly supportive, uh, caring for her and doing the physical therapy and the other um, steps that are necessary to keep her alive and, and functioning as well as she possibly could. But basically in the course of a day, uh, because of her limitations, she can do virtually nothing other than watch TV, talk with people yeah. who come over, uh, maybe read a little bit, but even read, I mean, she can't turn a page. She has no movement in her hands or arms or legs. Don mentioned to me, Sharon, that one of the reasons that you have so much drive and fortitude is you want to show others that the laws in the state of Louisiana aren't the best laws in the world concerning medical malpractice cases, right? That is correct. On July 26, 2003, at approximately 3.45 in the afternoon, Christopher Allison and his family were driving back to Pocatello, Idaho from their vacation in Washington. Suddenly and unexpectedly, their vehicle was struck by another driver from the rear, jackknifing their camper and overturning their Ford Expedition, crushing and killing Christopher and injuring the rest of the Allison family. Today, the Insider Exclusive will show you how the Allison's lawyers, Robert Krauss 
and Emily Rankin of the Spence Law Firm took on Ford Motor Company and successfully sued them for the defective product design of the door latch and component system and other defects and got justice for the Allison family. My name is Jeffrey Scott Hornoff and I'm a police officer. I was convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. Every step of the judicial system failed me and my family. And if not for the guilt and remorse of the true killer, I'd still be in prison. She died, I killed her. Why would you not want to ensure that California stops putting innocent people in prison? It's a very good question. I was locked up when I was 20 years old, just turned 20 years old. I'm 42 now, so I've been in a little over 22 years. It was hard for my father to explain to me. I got convicted of raping somebody, but daddy didn't do it. So it was like, how you not do it, daddy? You've been in here for all these years now. Everything in your life is wonderful, and then one day, somebody comes up and tells a lie on you, and you end up in jail. What's different is he knows fear doesn't exist. When they told me rape, robbery, Possession of instrument, a crime, a gun, a conspiracy, all these. I'm like, oh my God, you know, this, this is almost like 100 years in jail for something you didn't do, and I'm, I'm really scared. I was in shock because I got found guilty. I looked him right in the face and I said, You and I both know I didn't kill anyone. And he couldn't look me in the eye. He sentenced me to all that time, and I didn't know what to expect in prison. You know, I expected to uh, be beaten, be raped. I expected to die in prison. The government has failed the exonerated. It's finally over. It's been 19 years. What now? Go home. Dr. William J. Irwin failed to comply with the appropriate standard of care for an OBGYN in the year 2007. And as a result, Rebecca Gatti, a newborn baby, suffered severe brain damage, which is lifelong and irreversible. Those brutally frank words were how the Louisiana Medical Review Board explained to Ryan and Susan Gatti the parents of their new baby girl, Rebecca, why Rebecca had suffered irreversible brain damage due to the incompetence of Dr. Irwin and now will require round-the-clock care for the rest of her life with no chance whatsoever for improvement. Today, the Insider Exclusive will take you behind the headlines of this real-life couple, Ryan and Susan Gaddy, who entrusted their child's health and welfare to this grossly incompetent doctor. Following is a TV commercial for American Family Insurance. Since the dawn of time, people have needed people. The personal connection, 
the shoulder to lean on. That is our role. To deliver more than just a policy on a piece of paper. To deliver peace of mind. Because we are family. American family. And like family, we grow stronger each day with the constant promise to always be fair, helpful, and caring. Doing whatever we can to make things easier. Striving to keep our promises. This is what we do for our clients. We get to know them like family. Because that's who we are. American Family Insurance. But today, the Insider Exclusive presents a true, really tragic story, one that American Family Insurance doesn't want you to know. One hot Missouri summer day, Galen Ritchie's sister, Brenda, called her insurance company, American Family, and her agent, Catherine Philip Leitz, telling her that a 1,400 pound tree limb, nearly half the tree, had fallen on Brenda's house. She called three times that week, and on three separate occasions, American Family refused to pay to have this 1,400 pound limb removed. If you don't care about people, you couldn't do this job. Sounds real good, doesn't it? Only problem is, Anthem Blue Cross really doesn't mean what they say. Ask Bob Daringer, widow of Esther Daringer. 49-year-old Esther beat breast cancer until it metastasized to her brain. Ohio State University physician Dr. Herbert Newton, her physician, had successfully treated cancer like Esther's through intra-arterial chemotherapy. Her husband's health insurer, Anthem Blue Cross, paid for three of the 12 scheduled treatments. Bob and Esther first learned that the fourth treatment was being denied the day before it was given. The insurance company had approved the first three of the 12 treatments, but then refused further payment, declaring the procedure experimental. Cigarette smoking is the leading cause of preventable death in the United States. It causes serious illness among an estimated 8.6 million persons. It costs 167 billion in annual health-related losses, and it kills approximately 438,000 people each year. Worldwide, smoking kills nearly 5 million people annually. today with dedicated colleagues from within the Department of Justice as well as beyond it to announce a historic settlement with Pfizer Incorporated in a combination civil and criminal settlement 
Pfizer has agreed to pay $2.3 billion, the largest health care fraud settlement in the history of the Department of Justice. You now know that exposure to asbestos products caused this. Yes. Not only in the Navy, but also working as a custodian at the school. Yes. You're on national TV now. What do you have to say to the manufacturers that created these products? Well, they knew years ago, and they should have started much earlier in the, uh, in the process of eliminating the asbestos from all their products. Uh, they chose not to, you know that. Mm -hmm. They chose not to. Uh, most of the major companies, uh, some that were, uh, that were litigated against, uh, filed bankruptcy and then turned around and regrouped and they were doing the exact same thing. They're going strong. Using the same, uh, same products. Yeah, they have a total disregard for human life, don't mm -hmm. they? Mark? They too. being a correctional officer and I chose that field because I wanted to make a positive impact on um, inmates. I view my prognosis as good. I, I keep responding to treatment and I was just talking to my sister yesterday because there's times where you get down and you think, oh, you know, you just want to give up. Uh, cannot operate with one hand. Dr. Anthony Sterling is an orthopedic surgeon who can no longer take care of his patients. He's been disabled ever since 1998 when he had surgery to remove a bone spur pressing on his spinal cord. The surgery did not turn out well. The worst thing that could happen to a surgeon happened to Dr. Sterling. During the surgery, he suffered a terrible injury that rendered his left arm completely paralyzed, and it remains paralyzed to this day, trapped in an ugly brace. So the man who routinely performed about 500 surgeries a year and expected to continue helping patients for another 15 years can no longer enter an operating room. Across the U.S., people are rising up against fracking for natural gas. A deadly threat to our homes and our lives is looming on the horizon. It is a new technique of gas oil extraction. It is known by various names, for example. The oil and gas industry says it isn't new. The industry says it's safe. 
But the industry is lying. The vertical gas wells are a completely different technology. The new technique of deep horizontal fracking destroys drinking water supplies, pollutes our air and our environments, and will continue to do so for possibly hundreds of years as the well casings inevitably fail and disposal sites inevitably leak. In this insider exclusive investigative TV series new documentary, Fracking, Dangerous Contamination, Bob and Lisa Parr's story, our news team found that in any area where fracking operations have happened, the local people have been outraged by the catastrophic damage to land, water supplies, air quality, animal and human health. Local economies have been destroyed, property values have fallen drastically up to 90%. And one of those areas is in Wise County, Texas, where the Barnett Shale is located. This is where we begin our story with Bob and Lisa Parr at their ranch and with their lawyer, Brad Gildy of the Gildy Law Firm. enough time, three seconds, for Clay Rush to possibly kick the game winner. Rush has made field goals of 20 and 26 yards, missed from 41. This one will be from 20 yards to win the Arena Bowl. When I think about football when I was playing, um, I like the challenges that it presented itself. You had to be physically fit. You had to be mentally fit. What's unique about arena football, I miss the fans. Um, it's a close-knit group. We consider us as a family. I've had over 30 procedures done with the head and neck. I've been on 90 different medications. I don't know what it's like not to have a headache. question you were here in July and you said that you were um, you commended Dodd-Frank for providing a blueprint mm -hmm. to get rid of too big to fail we've now understood this problem for nearly five years so when are we going to get rid of too big to fail well some of the you know as, as, you, as we've been discussing you know some of these rules take time to develop um, uh, the Orderly Liquidation Authority, I think we made a lot of progress on that. We've got the living wills. I think we're moving in the right direction. Um, if additional steps are needed, then Congress obviously can discuss those, but we do have a plan and I think it's moving in the right direction. Any idea about when we're going to arrive in the right direction? <laughs> it's, it's going to take, it's, it's not a zero one kind of thing. It's, it's, a, it's over time. The concern that you have raised is one that I frankly share. And I'm not talking about HSBC now, because that, that, that maybe that not be appropriate. But I am concerned that the size of some of these institutions becomes so large that it does become difficult for us to, um, to prosecute them when we are hit with um, indications that if you do prosecute, if you do bring a criminal charge, uh, it will have a negative impact on the national economy, perhaps even the world economy. And I think that is a function of the fact that some of these institutions have become too large. Tell me a little bit about the last few times you've taken the biggest financial institutions on Wall Street all the way to a trial. Anybody? I appreciate that you say you don't have to bring them to trial. My question is, when did you bring them to trial? 
uh, we have not had to do it as a practical matter to achieve our supervisory goals. Can you identify when you last took the Wall Street banks to trial? Um, I will have to get back to you with the specific information. These are just a few of the real Americans who have dealt with our legal system that is gradually eroding in favor of big business and the government because of tort reform legislation. And this is why we all need to protect a legal system that is designed to protect us and not one that protects corporate business or the government or the common everyday American. Victor Ferrugia has earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best trial lawyers in New Orleans, in Louisiana, and in the United States. His goal is not only to get justice for his clients, but to make sure that everyone is treated with equal respect and dignity as guaranteed under the Constitution of the United States. He has seen many innocent and hardworking people become victims, and because of that, he is driven to fight for people who have been harmed by the willful or negligent actions of others. He has built a substantial reputation by consistently winning cases other law firms have turned down. His amazing courtroom skills and headline-grabbing success rate continue to provide his clients with the results they need and the results they deserve. This is the Insider Exclusive, live from New Orleans. It is my great pleasure to introduce once again Victor Ferrugia to the show. Welcome to the show, Victor. Well, thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure being here. Today we're talking about a bigger subject, and the subject we're going to talk about is tort reform. A lot of people call it tort deform, okay? What is the meaning of, first of all, define tort, and what is the, the propaganda that the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is putting out there, the big defense firms, the businesses are putting out there about why we need tort reform. Well, torts are uh, uh, negligence that someone injures you. Yeah. Um, and uh, it would be car accidents, it could be uh, malpractice, that would be a tort. Yeah, so, it could be uh, work, uh, injured at a job, that kind of Injured at a job, stuff. yes. A product yeah. defect, anything. Right. Okay. And, the, and the tort reform is a movement of the last several decades yes. of uh, insurance companies and uh, doctors and and their businesses com and businesses complaining about large jury verdicts yeah. and they're claiming that uh, uh, that we need to restrict trial lawyers cap and them cap them yeah. cap the trial lawyers verdicts the yeah. jury verdicts and that it's uh, greedy trial lawyers that yeah. are running up costs yeah. uh, so they can get rich right correct that's, okay that's, so the theory let's, of behind tort reform. Yeah, let's talk about verdicts, okay? And let's talk about let's talk about big verdicts. Let's talk about a fifty million dollar verdict or a hundred million dollar verdict. Oftentimes, it is there are two elements of that verdict: compensatory damages, correct? Correct. And punitive damages, right? Correct. Okay. So let's talk. What is the definition of compensatory damages and punitive damages? Okay. Well, compensatory damages would be uh, what you need to pay the victim f to compensate them right. for, for their uh, loss for their economic or pain and suffering yeah. losses okay the and the punitive damages yes. on the other hand is something that uh, 
uh, is related to the net worth of the uh, of the person who committed this. The tort. defendant could be the a company. Could, could be, be a company. company, and it's something to uh, actually punish them. I guess that's why you get yeah. punitive from right. to uh, uh, so that they won't yeah. do this again yeah. because because they have reached a higher standard. Yes. To get into the punitive damages right. that they knew what they were doing yeah. it. And they did it anyway, yeah. even knowing the law. And so they need to be punished or else they'll continue to do it. Yeah, yeah. And let me give you a couple of examples. Okay. Everybody knows the famous McDonald hamburgers case. Okay. McDonald hamburger was serving coffee that was too hot in the cup that it was being served in was too thin. They had had prior, I forgot the name of the, the plaintiff in this case that everybody complains it was too high of a verdict. But they had had something like seven or eight hundred complaints prior to that time. Lower the lower the you know the the temperature of the coffee. They didn't do anything about it. Let's talk about another example. You will often see automobile manufacturers, you know, and thank God there's a Ralph Nader out there. The reason that cars are safer today is because of warriors like yourself who have sued the car manufacturers because if you left it to them to say, hey, make your car safer, don't put the gas tanks like the Corvair in the back of the car so when someone smashes in it, it blows up like a bomb, right? Or you should put safety belts on a car so that person will be safer, right? Without trial lawyers suing the automobile manufacturers to force them, force them to be, to produce a, a more friendly, safer consumer product, these manufacturers wouldn't have done it. That's correct. So in, when you have punitive damages, the message is for society, right? We're punishing this company for doing all these bad things before, which you didn't give a damn about, okay? And we're going to send a message because money talks, doesn't it? That, that's correct. Money talks. So yeah, that's correct. the tort reform movement was, is, was and is a movement by businesses heavily promoted by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce to say there are these greedy trial lawyers out there who are trying to get rich and hey, you bring in a big verdict that's paid, you get a lot of money. But the bottom line is that punitive damages award is to make that company change. Has that worked? Yes, yes. it has. We have safer products. Let me give you an example. I did a uh, special on riding lawnmowers. You know what they are? You know, it's like a little tractor you get on it, right? There was a defective element in a riding lawnmower, which was that when you put it in reverse, the rotors would continue to move at 200 miles an hour, okay? And oftentimes when you're backing up, you can't see behind you. And oftentimes the people who are riding the riding, the lawnmowers are the, the dad, the mom, the brother, the adult, and they have younger siblings, they have children, that they have told these two, three, four-year-olds, stay away from this area. But you know, kids don't listen, right? So they get maimed, they get injured, they get killed, they get their legs cut off and that sort of thing. Actually, there's 5,000 incidents like this a year. So the manufacturers were sued, all of them, and there's probably 20 of them, were sued to say, you know, you can change the product by shutting off the rotor when you back it up. Real simple. It's called no mow in reverse, okay? Very simple to do this. Um, did they do it right away? No. Took 25 years wow. to do this, okay? And the last manufacturer who made this change was a manufacturer everybody knows well, Sears and Roebuck. Wow. You can all American. I'm glad to read recently they're going out of business. Thank God. <laughs> okay, if you treat people like crap, that's what happens, you know. But when you have these lawsuits, you know, that require the companies to make changes to make it safer for the consumer, right? Oftentimes, um, they don't recall the defective product. So I'm going to tell you right here and now, there's 35 million riding lawnmowers still riding around out there right now that don't have, that were not, never recalled, that are going to maim, injure, and kill children over the next, whatever, 20 years. You know, and that's a sad thing. Now, Let's talk about another thing because um, you're familiar with this sun the sunshine legislation. What is? Do you know what it is? Um, Let me explain to you explain. what it is. What it is is oftentimes manufacturers, defendants, companies will settle a case confidentially, right? And usually that relates to the amount of money, so nobody can piggyback that. Say, hey, I'm going to get rich too, right? But oftentimes it it seals 
whatever evidence they had that showed that they ignored all safety requirements and everything, they still went ahead and did it anyway. Kind of like the GM ignition switch case, faulty ignition switch case, right? Where they continued, they were aware people were dying in these accidents, but they didn't do anything about it. Right. Sunshine legislation was was it was never approved by Congress, and it never probably will be, was to say that when there's a like a defective product or when there is information that the public needs to know, you can't hide it. You can't you can't hide it in a confidential settlement. That might change the way you know people think. So now I want to ask you about some of the truths and myths of tort reform. There is a myth that America is suffering from a litigation explosion of personal injury lawsuits. Is that true? Uh, no, it's not true. Okay, why not? That, that's not true. Why not? Because, because uh, the, uh, the attorneys that, uh, that evaluate these personal injury lawsuits, they, they can't bring fr frivolous lawsuits. There are controls on that. There are uh, motions for summary judgment where the judge will will uh, deny the ability to get to a jury yeah. if, if there is not uh, sufficient evidence or if it is a frivolous lawsuit. Yeah. So um, there are safeguards that uh, those cases don't even get to the jury. Yeah. And then uh, the ones that do get to the jury, it's the jurors who decide that's the amount of money that yeah. needs to be paid to compensate the victim yeah. And to have punitive damages if punitive damages are allowed. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Louisiana doesn't really have uh, punitive damages unless it's uh, specifically apply, uh, specified in the law that punitive damages apply. Yeah. Generally, we don't have punitive damages in this state, which is different from most other states. In this, in our case, tort reform really didn't apply here because of our limit of punitive damages, we we didn't see the huge verdicts in our state that have been seen in other states in the country. It, it, I, I have seen cases, for example, I reported on a case that was in Nevada, and I think it was in Reno, and a woman came into a casino and asked the bartender to give her a bottle of bottled water, which he did, and it was sealed. And she opened it up, and I think the casino was uh, Harris. She opened it up and chugged it down, but it didn't have water in it. It had acid, and it burned her esophagus, and you know, caused a lot of medical problems. The reason I'm bringing up this case is it happened in Reno. The case should have been tried in Reno. And the casinos tell their casino employees, listen, you guys, they tell them this, you're going to sit in a jury. And if a big jury, if you award a lot of money, you'll probably lose your jobs. Do they say that? Oh, yes. Okay, so they had this case moved to San Francisco. And the reason they were able to move to California is real clever, is because they were able to show that 85% of the Casino's budget, marketing budget, was spent in California to get the <laughs> to get the customers over to uh, you know to Reno, Nevada, which is true. And this right. woman happened to have come from California. So here's another question, which we have a, a myth: Corporations get hammered in court by outrageous punitive damage awards. What do you have to say about that? Well, I, I say that uh, when there is a punitive damage award, they have uh, the case has met the higher standard. Yeah. If they've met that standard and yeah. the proof yes. that they've ignored laws and continued to do this uh, outrageous behavior as a corporation yeah. and ignored the laws and continued to do it, then uh, the jury has the right to make this award. Yeah. Then there are appellate courts. If if this is too high a verdict and the and the evidence doesn't support it, right. then they go to the Court of Appeals. Yeah. The Court of Appeals can reduce it. So there are many safeguards yeah. already in the system. And and so we, we don't need to prejudice the public in general against all lawsuits right. and all trial lawyers because we're out there doing our job, compensate victims yeah. of negligent behavior or yeah. 
purposeful behavior. Right. Tort reform has also recoveries, uh, the amount of recovery in medical malpractice cases in this state. And um, one of the reasons the insurance companies gave for the necessity of passing these was they said that insurance rates, medical malpractice rates, uh, insurance rates are going whack, wacky out of control. They're going way out of control. So therefore, if we have a cap then we can reduce the doctor's medical malpractice cases because we know we'll never have to pay a lot of money. Did that happen? Well, the, you know, I, I'm sure that uh, that reduced the medical malpractice insurance payments by What if doctors? I told you it didn't? Didn't. What if I told you it didn't? Didn't I? State after state after state, and even in California. Really? And a group of doctors ended up suing the insurance companies, <laughs> saying, hey, man, you told us you would reduce our medical malpractice premiums if we went along with this thing, but, you know, didn't it happen. didn't happen. Wow. The insurance companies are liars. I mean, that's the whole plan here. That's what they want to do. I've also heard that uh, trial lawyers want to, this is a myth, are trying to drive corporations out of business by filing lots of lawsuits against them. <laughs> <laughs> this is a myth propagated by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Wow. You know? This is the United States of America. Free enterprise. Yeah. Corporations, uh, you know, are people yeah. that, that are producing products for our country, and yeah. we need that. Wouldn't you say that after every major case where a big verdict has come in, whether it's in the medical field, whether it's in the manufacturing field or whatever, there have been changes that have been brought about by that defendant so they don't get they're not, they don't expose themselves again? Would you say that? Oh, yes. There so the purpose, yes. the purpose of our court system is to, it's a check and balance on unregulated companies, right? Yes. That just do what they want to do and ignore the common everyday person. That's, that's correct. Corporations who are only driven by profit and refuse to uh, safeguard the public, Yes. Uh, they need checks. They, they need someone and some system yeah. in place to stop that type of behavior. To the everyday average Louisianian, is that the way you say it, Louisianian? Yes, Louisiana. Okay, yes. it's a mouthful, man. <laughs> <laughs> to the everyday average Louisianian. Yes. Am I saying that right? That, that's right. Perfect. Okay, yes. what would you say to them if you wanted, because they've heard it all, they hear it all the time, tort reform, we need tort reform. We need to put those trial lawyers out of business because they're ruining everything for everybody. What do you have to say to them? What I have to say to them is, if you're sitting on a jury, mm -hmm. if you get selected for a jury, yes. go in with an open mind. Don't go in there saying, oh, well, I know this, this trial lawyer is just trying to get a lot of money and yeah. have a prejudice against yeah. the trial lawyer because yeah. the trial lawyer is doing his job and he's trying to help the public, yes. trying to protect his client and, and get his client enough money to compensate that client for yeah. their losses. Yes. So don't uh, hold this uh, prejudice of tort reform yeah. that has been uh, brought about by all the, the big insurance companies, yeah. the big corporations. Don't let that affect your ability to be open-minded and to be fair when you're sitting on a jury. Right. I want to say one other thing, which I think should be mentioned in every single show, and that is you are a plaintiff's trial lawyer. Correct? Yes. And so when you take on one of these cases, you take it on contingency. And for everybody who doesn't know what contingency means is this. You take on a big company, that person is not paying you any money. Your client is not paying you any money unless you win. And there are cases where millions of dollars have been spent, right, to try and get a case before a jury to win a case. And if you lose, you're out of business, aren't you? That's correct. You yes. know, so you're taking a big gamble with your life, your income, your family, your, you know, reality by taking on cases and trying to win them on the behalf on behalf of clients who really need justice, right? That's correct. So my hat's right. off that's to a, you. That's a big risk. That's why we do these shows. Right. Good. And I want to thank you very much for spending time with us again. We'll be back. Okay. Okay. It's great. I want to, to find here. out about your daughter's medical malpractice case. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Great.
Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com.